I have been following closely the story of Jimmy Lay uh, with interest and prayers. For those who never heard of Jimmy Lay, uh, lie. he is a Hong Kong billionaire, entrepreneur, and democracy activist. And he's also an adult convert to Catholicism. So besides his other business, Lai founded uh, the Apple Daily, a newspaper that was front and center in the battle against the Chinese Communist government's campaign to suppress civil rights in Hong Kong. The paper was suppressed last year by the government. So Lai's been arrested multiple times. If you look at the paper today, he was charged among other, again, he has, there's so many charges against him, he just got sentenced to five years for fraud that was all trumped up charge. But he's currently in jail, awaiting a trial where he's certain to be convicted unjustly again, and perhaps sentenced to life imprisonment. So what fascinates me about Jimmy Lay is, is his courage. I mean, it's an admirable thing to want to support freedom in Hong Kong, but I think what, what puts Jimmy in, in a particular different class of hero for me is that he could so easily have avoided jail where he's, where he's going, even while remaining active in the cause. You wouldn't have even had to abandon the cause. So, I mean, he's a billionaire. He saw what was coming, everybody did. The Communist Party's suppression of the rights of Hong Kong. He has a British passport. He could have fled Hong Kong easily at any time and lived a very comfortable life and still have been the head and the founder and the funder of all sorts of good uh, pro-democracy movements. Instead, he stayed knowing he was facing an almost certain sentence to a communist prison camp. So well, today, I want to preach about the virtue of fortitude or courage, because it's one of the themes of today's scripture. I don't know if you caught that, but it's one of the things that all three have. For instance, in our first reading from Isaiah, strengthen the hands that are feeble, make firm the knees that are weak, say to those who heart, whose hearts are faint, be strong, fear not. Here, he, here is your God. He comes with vindication. And then listen to the letter of James. You must be patient. Make your hearts firm because the coming of the Lord is at hand. Take as an example of hardship and patience the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Come back to that idea of patience later. And then we end with the last of those prophets, the greatest and final Old Testament prophet, John the Baptist who in our gospel, he lies in prison. So he's in a dungeon precisely because he had the courage to speak out against King Herod. Again, he was an activist, as we would say. Again, Jimmy Lai reminds me of John the Baptist. So courage is this virtue that I think few of us can, you know, honestly say, yeah, I've got, I'm, I'm a very courageous person because in our minds and in our memories, there's all these ways in which we've been humiliated in our fears. We know when we haven't acted or when we've done something uh, kind of cowardly. We often sin out of fear. Sin is a huge, fear is a huge driver of sin. We're afraid of something or not having something. So what is this courage? You know, I think in the popular imagination, courage can mean kind of a readiness to fall in battle rather than to run away. It may not be for us military battle, but we all have battles we're facing. And are we going to stand there and maybe take the fall, or, or are we going to run away? So at one extreme, for a Christian, we have to be ready to deny our life so that we won't deny Christ. Again, that's martyrdom. It's, well, again, that's at one end. But there are many lesser matters where we have to, we have to be ready to do the good in the face of threats. The courageous person is someone who cannot be forced to give up doing the good out of fear of losing lesser things. And I believe Jimmy lies in prison because his faith has taught him that human rights are more important, the human person is more important than the very real but lesser good that is his freedom. So I'm willing to sacrifice this because I see a better good. Courage doesn't mean we're fearless. I mean, again, uh, if we are, there's no fear to overcome, it doesn't take the virtue of courage to do so. True courage is doing the good despite our fears. So think how many, this is applicable to us. We're not in a prison in a communist country, but think of how many times at, at work or school or among friends, 
we remain silent in the face of mockery or attack on our friends, beliefs, religion. Think of how often we put up with destructive behavior by those we love or who are responsible for because we don't want to face a reaction when we tell them what the good is. I mean, I, I think it doesn't take a, a threat of prison to shut most of us up. We, in our fear, we subconsciously remember what happens to people like John the Baptist or Jimmy Lack. We say, fear wins. I'll just be quiet. We can usually recognize and maybe picture courage as this great action. I'm going to charge up the hill or I'm going to defy publicly this, this authority that's trying to put me down. But where does patience come in? Again, remember the second reading from St. James. You must be patient. Make your hearts firm. We usually don't consider patience a form of fortitude. At least I, that doesn't come to us very easily. Patience seems kind of passive to be courageous, right? But St. Thomas Aquinas says that patience, the word, by the way, just comes from a Latin word meaning suffering. Patience is actually the highest form of courage. And the, the patient person is one who perseveres despite suffering that results from doing good. So it's not one action, it's an endurance. That's what makes it so difficult. I don't just have to do it once. There's a famous story by, oh well, um, and, uh, my mind's just gone one blank. Pass on that one. But um, I'll come back to it. But the idea of doing one action versus enduring the thought. Um, I was thinking about Jimmy Lai's courage to publicly defy the, the Communist Party. It's in the news right now. It looks, it looks pretty good. You know, I, I'm doing it. But even more, what about enduring prison? Um, to publicly defy the party is one thing, but now living out a life sentence in a communist prison camp when everybody but God has pretty much forgotten you. That is going to be true courage. You know, that's a that's a the courageous virtue of patience. And I think if he can do that, then he impresses me more than any sort of uh, stirring words that he might utter in his trial, where he stands up for freedom or democracy or rights or religious freedom or whatever it is. Those would be great. I, I would be thrilled to hear them. But can you live out 10, 20, 30 years in a prison camp? So John the Baptist acted courageously in speaking the truth to King Herod, as Jimmy spoken it to the Communist Party. But then again, result, he endures prison, eventually martyrdom. So this is true, this idea of the importance of endurance, not just for heroic Christian martyrs in concentration camps or the catacombs or someplace like that, but in our own small lives as well. Um, I, think about, I think about the spouse who goes every day to the assisted care place where his or her spouse is and just visits because the person has Alzheimer's, but just still goes all the time. That impresses me of it as persevering and patience, suffering. I mean, I'm going to, I'm just keep on doing it. Or the person who lasts in a very difficult marriage, maybe decades, but says, you know what? I'm here. I persevere. What about those with terminal illness and the last, the last treatments failed? So now you have this amount of time, it's, you simply, you have to endure. How are you going to do it? Are you going to do it? Or think of us. I think these days, being a, remaining a faithful Catholic these days requires perseverance. It's getting harder to remain fervent, you know that? Just to keep going to Mass every week in today's climate, doubt, uncertainty, sin, requires endurance. Is it not courageous to persevere in such situations with faith? How many people have it? Do we think of that as courage? Most of the time we think, oh, I'm not a courageous person. But to endure. How do we grow in the virtue of fortitude? Now, there can be natural courage. Atheists, non-Christians, they can be courageous too. But there is a virtue of courage that's supernatural and given to us by God. And it's again offered to us by the Holy Spirit. And I was just thinking, how do you get it? I would say pray for it. When we're afraid, and it happens to us all the time, when we're afraid, pray to the Holy Spirit for the gift of courage, fortitude. And sometimes you think, well, I, I was hoping for something more magical or complicated than that. That's it. 
I think, I think Jimmy's praying in prison right now. I bet he's, I bet he's praying. And more of, by the way, more of us Catholics in the larger Catholic church should be praying and speaking out for him as well. So what good action is God calling us to do right now in our lives? What evil do we need to speak out against right now? What evil that cannot be changed is God asking us to endure courageously? So if we want that courage to do God's will, again, pray the Holy Spirit. We'll receive the strength, enough strength, not more than enough. Not that the, not that the fear is going to go away, but simply we'll have it, he'll give us enough so we can do what we need to do, that we can do his will in that situation. So as St. James, who like John the Baptist, would eventually be martyred by King Herod. So Herod got both John the Baptist and James. You know, he says today, Take as an example of hardship and patience. So take as, an event, take as an example of courage, brothers and sisters, the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. We do that and we will conquer our fears even in ourselves.